Raphael Bostic is with me. He is the President and Chief Executive of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. It is good to have you with us. Uh, the numbers that we've seen on uh, the economy, uh, the GDP forecasts, private sector forecasts, the unemployment, the unemployment claims, we sort of know it's going to be bad, but just how bad is becoming truly shocking. Well, you know, I don't know if it's truly shocking. I think the context here is really important that we have a public health problem. We have a challenge and the, the response to deal with that effectively means we have to shut everything down for hopefully a short period of time. And in that time when things are shut down, we know it's going to be fairly uh, painful for a lot of folks. And that's why what I've been trying to focus on, and you heard this a little in what Mary uh, said, uh, the, the clip that you ran, is that uh, we want to get through this as fast as possible so that the disruption that happens is not a permanent one, but rather just a short-term one. And if we can do that, uh, then these numbers, there is a hope that these numbers can turn around pretty quickly. Fed has done. I was just looking. Uh, the Fed has pretty much given support for money markets, it's given corporate debt relief, it's going to central bank swaps and repo arrangements. Um, there is, one wonders, under the rubric of whatever it takes, how much more heavy lifting the Fed is likely to have to do. What do you think? Well, I, I think you said the key words, which are whatever it takes. You know, what, what we did to start was we took all the toolkits, all the things out of the toolkit that we did in the Great Recession, and we rolled them out immediately. You know, one of the lessons we learned at, at that point was that uh, go big, go after this aggressively to start, and then, uh, then step back and monitor to see what's happening in the marketplace. We're doing that right now, basically, which is trying to see, given all the stuff that we've done, where are there still supports that are needed, where are we seeing stresses and challenges, and to the extent that we have tools that can address that, uh, I think I'm prepared to support going and doing that because ultimately what we're trying to do is make sure that we, we create a bridge between the beginning of this crisis through to the end of the crisis so that whatever disruption happens is not fundamentally uh, uh, damaging to the economy in ways such that those fundamentals aren't there when we uh, get into recovery. Do you see at the moment that there is more that the Fed could or should be doing? Uh, looking at other central banks who, who are doing similar to yourselves in some shape or form, but now people are talking about doing the unconventional, unconventional on the unorthodox on things that were already unconventional to begin with. QE seems rather conventional now. You know, is there some irony to this that when we first did these sort of policies in 2007 and 2008, through 2012 even, they were viewed as really on the outer bounds of what people had imagined, and now they are just basic parts of our toolkit, and I think that's a good evolution. What I would say is right now, we've got staff throughout the Federal Reserve System that are in their offices and at home on conference calls and the like, working hard to figure out, well, what are the other things we might be able to do? What sorts of creative things might there be? You know, we do have some constraints in terms of what the law allows us to do, but uh, we continue to talk with the Treasury Secretary and their department. I talk to legislators all the time, trying to understand the things that they're worried about, uh, and we're working hard to try to find solutions uh, to re relieve the pain points wherever they happen to be. One final thought uh, occurs to me. Um, from your own vantage point and with the expertise that you have at the Atlanta Fed, do you, I guess once the economy starts opening again, as you said at the beginning, it's been deliberately shut down. How much do you fear those small and medium-sized businesses will not have access, will not get the credit or the help that they need, that they go away or disappear? Because that would be devastating for the economy. So I agree with that. That's a, that's a major concern. Look, we know that small and medium-sized businesses already operate with very thin margins. They don't have the luxury of going to capital markets to build up buffers to, to weather these sorts of shocks. 
So I'm hopeful that the fiscal stimulus that uh, has been passed, and I'm expecting there'll be more actually, uh, will target them and get to, get to those businesses so that they are able to stay in business because uh, in many communities, that's the lifeblood. That's the stuff that makes cities and towns work. And if they go away, uh, the recovery is going to be a much rockier and much more difficult. So I'm hopeful that we can get stuff to them as quickly as possible. You know, we're doing a lot of engagement with banks right now, asking them to work with their small business customers to try to find ways to uh, make the burdens less on them. And I'm hopeful that that coupled with uh, the fiscal uh, benefits and the relief that's being offered uh, can get them to the other side.